Hi everybody, TJ Mac Vintage Cards and Nostalgia. And in today's video, I'm showing off my 12th addition to my Diamond Stars collection. I'm trying to put together the 96 different images in the Diamond Stars set. There's 108 total cards. Cards 97 through 108 are repeat images. So I just want to do the 96 different images. And uh, Lions here is uh, one of the cards that was issued in 1935. And you can see here he's in his White Sox uniform, which is the only team that he ever played for. He was a pitcher um, who played from 1923 to 1941, and then again in 1946. Like many players of his time, he served in World War II from 1942 until uh, 1945 in the Marine Corps. What's a little different, though, is that he joined the Marine Corps at the age of 41, and went to officer school and rose to the rank uh, of, of captain. So I think it's pretty impressive to join the military at that age. Shows you the patriotism of uh, many of the players at that time. Now, when uh, Lyons came into the major leagues, he came right out of Baylor University, where he is a multi-sport star, and then he went right to the White Sox as a pitcher. Never played any uh, games in the minors, which wasn't uh, something that was done very often. So it shows you the talent that he had. But he also pitched for some pretty bad White Sox teams over those years, and um, it does have a reflection on his record. He was uh, 260 and 230. He's the only Hall of Famer that has more walks and strikeouts, and he also has the fourth highest ERA of any Hall of Famer at 3.67. So some don't really feel that he's worthy of being a Hall of Famer. I tend to think um, that he is, and I would like to actually see more guys get into the Hall of Fame. I've been to the Hall of Fame many times. I don't live that far away from it, and I think a larger hall, to me, is a good thing because it exposes some of these uh, players to uh, young people, and they can actually learn more about them. Because, unfortunately, I think a, a lot of folks just focus on those guys that are in the Hall of Fame, and we tend to forget about a lot of the great players that are not. So Lions is somebody that um, I was happy to learn more about when I was putting this um, this build together here. And what's really cool about him is that when he got hurt around the 1930-31 season, he was a good fastball pitcher, and he had to change the way he pitched. So he adopted a knuckleball and, and um, worked on his curveball, and that really added some years to his career. What also helped him is that in 1939, the White Sox coach, um, Jimmy Dykes, started limiting him to pitching only on Sundays because the White Sox organization thought that would draw more people to the games because Lyons was such a popular uh, pitcher. So he became known as Sunday Teddy. So he'd get six days rest and just pitch on Sundays. So I thought that was a, a little uh, cool anecdote to share because it just shows you the approach to, to the game that some teams took back then. And being the White Sox were a very good team, they were looking for some uh, novelties to draw people into the stadium. So just a fun card to add to the collection. I'm going to flip it over now in the back here. I'm sorry for the, the bright light. It's a green ink back, and uh, you can see here they always put um, some uh, tips of the game back there. And it, in this one here, it talks about uh, good pitchers like Ted Lyons being able to cover up the ball before they throw it. And my son's a pitcher, and that's one of the things, of course, that they teach when they're when they're trying to um, groom pitchers and, and improve their uh, performance as they teach them to hide the ball so that way it keeps the, the hitter off balance. So you can see they were even talking about that back in the 1930s. I thought it would be fun to show some of the uh, pictures that the Diamond Stars cards were, um, were images from. So you can see here a picture of uh, Ted Lyons that was used as the image on the Diamond Stars card and it's taken from the thigh up here on the card. And obviously you have the whole image of uh, Lions in the black and white photo here. And behind him, you can see uh, the stadium, but on the Diamond Stars card, it's a different depiction. Uh, there's flags on top of the stadium there, and then you can still see um, some of the posts and, and the uh, roof there behind him. So I'm not really sure um, if the artist just took complete liberty with it or if... He took a further view out of the stadium and just did his own rendition. I think that's what's very interesting about these cards is that type of artwork, and it's one of those things that really, truly makes them art cards. I'm going to show a few other images just to have some fun here with these cards. Here's the Gus Sir um, card that I showed in my last video, and then here's an image of Gus Sir that was used to make the card. And I believe uh, this um, card... 
the black and white photo here is a Butterfinger Premium. And what they did here, of course, is they added the runner onto the card. And that's why I said in the last video that it's funny that he's smiling here and then he got a runner coming up on him. But that's because the artist just took the liberties of adding the runner into the photo. And you can see here that he's in a pose shot smiling for the camera. So here's the uh, Paul Wayner card, and this is one of those cards that always intrigued me. I've talked about it in the past, so I did take the time to find the photo online that was used for the card. And you can see it's uh, Wayner from the waist up here, and you can see the sleeves and then the P on his um, arm. And what's really cool about this is now you know that there was no catcher or umpire behind him. And there is, a, there is players over here, but they're different than this player, so the artist certainly... Um, took the liberty of adding that specific uh, player um, rendition behind him. So you can just see the liberties, again, that the artist took here with the uh, photos, or with the uh, images here behind the uh, photo that was colorized. So I think it's pretty cool. It solves the mystery for me because I was always wondering, what are they doing here? So it makes you wonder that uh, the person that did the artwork on this, um, how familiar they are with baseball or what really was their... Um, perspective behind doing what they did. One of the cool uh, things about the Diamond Star set, I think. The last one here is the red roughing. You can see here the image of uh, red there on the right, black and white. And it's the same um, photo that's been painted over on the card. It's just um, it was cropped differently where you can just see it from the thigh up. And then obviously you can see behind uh, the black and white photo, there's no player or umpire. Um, that was added onto the card. So just again, one of those um, neat things about the set that I enjoy. So that's all I got for today. I just wanted to share my new edition and just talk a little bit about some of the photography. Uh, I will be coming out with another video probably this weekend because it is a holiday weekend and I usually, when the holiday weekends come up, I have a little extra time and I like to make a second video. Everybody take care and we'll talk again soon.